All right, to continue on with the celebration of Microsoft Flight Simulator 40th anniversary, I figured we would take out the Grumman Goose. Uh, my last flight was taking out the de Havilland Beaver, so I figured this would be a good follow-up. Let's have a quick look at the outside of the aircraft and check out the textures. Um, overall, I'd say it's done very, very well. I can't really find any um, blurry or low-res or mixed textures. It's uh, done... Uh, Great with you can see like there's a little bit of like what I what I consider like clear coat uh, marks on there um, where it uh, you know shows signs of use. Um, they've done a good job attention to detail around uh, the engine with you know sort of like marks from um, the exhaust. Um, to me, the overall look at the outside of the aircraft is an old aircraft that has been sort of. Um, you know, re redone or restored, um, but is getting regular use. And I really like that. Um, so yeah, really good. Can't find any clipping. There's, there's no, uh, really issues on the outside whatsoever. I think it's, uh, looking, looking really well done. But let's go ahead and hop on to the inside and the inside, um, not quite as well done as the outside. The textures, uh, definitely seem a little bit lower res. Um, you know they're they're fine they're okay um the big problem is this giant gaping hole right here uh that should have a little bit more um avionics in there and and paneling um to give the aircraft a little bit more functionality uh they've said that they didn't put that in there because the type of navigation that this aircraft used back uh, when it was made is no longer in use, which is true, uh, but there's still, I think, around 30, 40 of these flying, and they've obviously been updated um, with uh, at least a nav and comm stack and a CDI, because uh, this does not even have a uh, comm stack in it. You cannot have any communications whatsoever. So if you want to use this on BATSIM, there's not a transponder to even use on this, which is a little unfortunate um and then the other thing that i find comical about that is that they say oh it's not in use anymore as far as the navigation but yet they still have the radio compass tuning and bands here which are are obviously inoperable so um little little disappointed on the um sort of overall cockpit as far as functionality goes looks of it are okay it's you know it, it's the some of the stuff looks good, like, you know, the wear on the seat and everything looks pretty good. You do have a door that opens and closes to go back to the cabin. Um, these little windows here should look down to the landing gear to let you know if they are up or down uh, for when you are on water. The uh, cabin itself, I think, looks uh, really well done. Um, the seats, the textures... Uh, the flooring, everything actually has a little bit more refined detail than the cockpit. Um, you know, besides things like the curtains, which honestly, I don't want those to be super high detailed because they're going to eat away at your frames per second and you're only back here for a little bit. Um, you do have a little lavatory in here as well. Your main door is here, which you can open up and the top will open and then you would have like a little ladder or plank way to uh, join those, which if you have a look just down there, you can see that there is a little ladder. Um, so we can go ahead and close that up. Uh, I thought that was the there. Yep, there we go. Um, and then you also have an emergency exit on this side, which is you know, no top, just a quick jump out. Um, now you do have some dome lights here. Uh, so there's one switch there for that one. And then back up at the uh, front of the cabin, you do have that one there. I will tell you why that's comical in just a moment. Let's go ahead and get right back on into the cockpit. All right, so for those of you who are familiar with some of my videos, uh, I typically do what I consider a quick and dirty startups uh, for these first flights. I'm not gonna go through a real world Checklist, just more of a high-level overview of getting um, things fired up so you can get in the air. Now, one of the things why I said about those dome lights being comical is that there is 
zero lighting in the cockpit. Uh, so you do not have uh, instrument lights, panel lights, floodlights, dome lights. Not, there's just absolutely nothing in here, uh, which I just don't understand how they managed to put in the dome lights for the cabin, but yet no lights for the people flying the aircraft, which... Yeah, like I said, it's just comical. Um, so saying that, let's just go ahead and get things fired up. We're going to come over to our electrical panel here. Um, we can go ahead and pop on our battery and generator, and then we can go and pop on our uh, nap light and our beacon lights. Um, we, I don't think we're going to need our pitot heat on today, but we might turn it on once we get up a little bit higher. Um, so with that going back here is your uh, cutoff valves um, we want both of those on and then you have your uh, main fuel selector here i'm going to put it onto the right tank and i'll explain why in a little bit so with all of that said we've got up top here our throttle mixture and prop controls um, you can just go ahead and uh, bring your we're going to do our right engine first you bring that forward. Technically, you're supposed to advance that once uh, you are the engine catches. Um, and then we're just going to uh, crack the throttle a little bit there. Um, we do have a wobble pump in this aircraft, which is behind us here. Um, that needs to be between three and uh, where's our gauge here? Uh, three and um, five psi. But you'll notice that when we Thankfully, you just have to do it once. Um, typically, you would have to pump that, um, but it takes it all the way up to about eight and nine, um, which is fine. It, it, it goes down in time, um, but it gives you a little bit more time to get fired up, I guess. But technically, you would not want it to be that high. So with that, um, we can go ahead and get our magnetos um, over to uh, both, which are here. Clear prop. And then on our ignition, um, we want to make sure that that is pushed in. Um, so we are on both uh, magnetos. Um, we've got, let's check our wobble pump pressure here. We're right where we should be. Um, and then our starter, I gotta remember where the starter is now on here. There we go. Uh, so you're just gonna go ahead and hit start. that'll fire up. We're looking for about 800 RPMs on here. Just get that right around there. Put that back off now that it's warming up. There we go. All right, so same procedure now for the other side. Uh, we won't need to do the wobble pump. We can just crack our throttle, bring our um, mixture all the way forward, and then we can go ahead and hit starter. Why do I feel like that did not start up? Oh, it did. It's just quiet. <laughs> uh, we'll let it warm up here and I'll get up to around 800 RPMs as well. There it goes. Um, so, once you have those um, running, you can go ahead and bring uh, your props full forward as well. Um, and we are pretty much uh, set to go from there. We got our lights on, fuel's running, throttle mixture, props. Um, so um, we can sort of get our taxi out. So currently we're sitting at um, a place called Silva Bay in British Columbia. We're going to be doing a flight up to Port Harvey, um, which is like a little logging community. Um, so let's go ahead and get our taxi underway. And I, if you've watched my Beaver video, I do have an add-on that is uh, called Pushback. And essentially, it holds you in place. It's great for seaplanes because it holds you in place uh, versus having it float all around, um, which you know typically we'd be roped off or 
uh, hooked up in some way to hold us in place. So, um, what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to kind of come around here and loop because we don't have a lot of space to take off. We're kind of going over there and there's some shallow areas there. So, um, in order to get off of this uh, dock kind of easily, we'll come to the outside view here. Now, the way this works is you have your tug speed and then you use your um, rudder to actually control it. So let's just put it on hold um, and we can bring up our speed just a little bit here and then let's go forward. It just gives us a nice sort of controlled way to really taxi. I'm just going to watch that tail so it doesn't hit. And then I just got to watch my wing on this other dock over here. All right, now this aircraft does not have a water rudder. Um, so we'll go ahead and just uh, drop our tug speed uh, back. Let me close that down. Notice it's still holding us in place, which is awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and hop back into the cockpit here. Um, now, the way you need to navigate this on the water is with differential power. So when you want to turn you know, left, you would add right power, right add left power. We can go ahead and bring these back to idle for now. Um, so we need to taxi on over here and kind of loop around. So let's go ahead and get that started. All right, so we're going to go ahead and come to full power, nice and easy. Now you'll see off to my right in a little bit here, there's going to be another little marker. There it is. We're going to get as close to that as possible. And let's go ahead and rotate. And we want to do kind of a steep climb to get up over these trees. Watching my airspeed. Nice. All right. We'll go ahead and make our turn up to the north and we can already start to reduce our power. So for our climb, we're going to do 32 and 20. See, without that light in here, it's so hard to see. So 32 and 20 or 2000, I should say. And then we'll just trim out for our climb. And we're just going to follow the coast up to the north. Um, we're going to really keep an eye out for a airport called Campbell. Um, and that'll be like our point where we're going to sort of cut cut the bay a little bit, or cut the strait a little bit. This is the Georgia Strait, and we're gonna cut it over to Johnstown Strait, which will line us up for our uh, Port Harvey. So we'll just carry on here. Um, once we level off for our cruise, um, I'll check back in and uh, we'll go over some other settings. All right, so we're just uh, got to 5,000. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trim us out for um, our cruising altitude here. We do want to adjust our power. So we're going to go ahead and drop this down to 31 and a half inches. And then we're going to drop our RPMs, which um, they are already they dropped down to 1900 there. Now, this aircraft is supposed to have a auto rich and auto lean mixture it, it, it does not in here so you do have to set your mixture yourself um, the way to do that is you're going to draw back the mixture until you see a dip in your rpm so there was the dip you want to bring that back up until they sort of like peak a little bit and this will just be sort of like uh, the rich of peak and now we can adjust our rpms back a little bit here uh, to get them to sometimes the RPMs on this just 
Like, I'm bringing that lever all the way back, and it's not dropping them. So, that might be down to, you know, I'm bringing that one all the way forward, and it's not doing anything. Now it is. You have to almost, like, drop it all the way back for it to, to sort of function, um, which is a little weird. Um, so, anyways, we're at 19... Uh, 31 and a half, um, and we're flying along at 1,500 feet. Now, I want to go ahead and swap that tank over to um, the left tank. And the reason why I had it on the right tank is because of the props on this aircraft, they do spin in the same direction, which gives you a um, left-turning tendency. Now, by making this died a little bit lighter already you can see we're not actually too far off of being straight uh, or level I should say but you can see it is still turning a little bit to the left so you fix that with your rudder trim um, I have a key bind for it so that way you can adjust you know both directions now we need to add some trim in to get this sort of straight and you can watch you know, I'm, I'm getting myself level with my ailerons and then seeing how much I need to adjust it. And it's like, okay, you know, actually right around there seems pretty good, maybe a little bit more. So you just kind of adjust that as you go, just like you would with your um, uh, elevator trim or your pitch trim. As you can see, we've come up a little high, which I'm adjusting to bring us right back down. Um, and we're just going to continue flying along here. This is still the Georgia Strait. I'm going to aim, kind of just cut over here a little bit. Um, and then uh, let me show you our plan on our VFR map here. Um, so I kind of want to cut through here. Um, we've got Campbell Airport, which is a nice uh, sort of visual that we will see. And then I want to, actually, sorry, there's Campbell Airport. Um, I want to cut through from Campbell through this little canyon instead of following the coast all the way up and then we just need to spot for really the second inlet to get to uh, Port Harvey. So we'll check back in uh, once I've gotten a little bit closer. Um, I, you know we'll just check in over Campbell to show how I'm going to spot this and fly through. So we just passed uh, by Campbell uh, Airport, um, and this is where we're going to cut uh, through here, which is uh, Johnstown Strait. Um, and if we have another look, because it, it's kind of hard to tell, like, okay, which one do we take on this side of the mountain here? Um, you see we need to stick off to the uh, left side of it here and cut through, because it kind of bends around. So that peak that we're seeing there is actually that one there. We want to make sure that we kind of follow this river and pop on out. As we're coming through here though, I'm going to begin our descent and probably drop us down to about uh, 3,000 feet, 2,500 feet, somewhere in that range. Um, but it's just nice to get those sort of visual references of like, okay, what are we looking at? All right, this is that uh, sort of elevation there. Um, there's clearly a valley there, but it's a little deceiving uh, because it does bend and we're looking at the side of that one. So um, we're just going to carry on. And um, once we get to uh, Johnstown Strait here and I've descended a little bit, we'll work on coming in to land at uh, Port Harvey, um, which is the little logging town. All right, so here we are coming into Port Harvey. This is our little entrance to the uh, little bay. Uh, there's a couple things that we want to do before we um, get ready to land. Sorry, I just realized I gained a little bit of altitude there. Um, one, we want to make sure we're on our fullest tank, which might be pretty much at the moment. Nope, our left is still uh, the most full, so we're going to stay on that. We also want to make sure our rudder is now uh, centered, so we can go ahead and I have a shortcut key for centering that. Um, and then uh, really, we just want to start to slow ourselves down um, 
so we can get prepared to drop in uh, the first 30 degrees of flaps. Uh, so here we are coming in. Just wanted to get a nice view of that lighthouse there. I'm going to bring in a little bit more power now that we're sort of uh, kind of getting low. I just wanted to get close to that lighthouse. It's super cool. So the way you want to touch down with these is very similar to like a um, like a two-wheel tail dragger landing. Um, we're currently full forward on prop mixture, um, and we can go ahead and drop our last notch of flaps. Bring us down to 60. 60 degrees flaps, that is. And we're just going to try and slow us down and kind of just float above that water a little bit. Go ahead and come to idle. There we go. So cool to be able to come into these little places, and I'll put links down below for where to pick these up. But there we are. We are arrived. It was a okay landing. Um, I probably would have liked to touch down a little bit sooner because we were coming in a little fast, but got over to the dock nice and quick. So overall, I, I mean, I had a lot of fun um, flying the Goose. Um, obviously, it's got. Uh, some issues with um, its functionality. Um, I think there needs to be an update to include a uh, nav and comm stack. I would like to see a CDI, um, you know, like a dual nav one, nav two CDIs um, in there so you can do some navigation. Um, I Maybe a GNS 530 variant or something, but I personally, I think it would spoiled the sort of feel of the aircraft to have a GPS in there. Um, and I think the left turning tendencies is, you know, while it's supposed to be, there is going to be a little, uh, I think it feels a little exaggerated. Um, and then obviously we need some interior lights for the cockpit because it is bad not to have those, especially when they went through the efforts to put in the dome lights in the cabin. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's flight. I certainly had a good time flying around British Columbia and landing at these cool little spots that I normally wouldn't go visit. So thanks for watching. This is Rocket Simulations. Uh, wishing you happy flights and silky smooth landings. Take care.